official Pompey podcast. In this episode, we chat to Paul Walsh about the highs and lows from his two spells with the Blues. So Paul, season 92-93, um, I don't know what expectations we had, what expectations you had, but it certainly wasn't dull, was it? Uh, no, I mean, you know, I, I, from, from, my, from my memory going back that time, um, I start, I, pre-season went great, um, worked hard, got to know the lads, um, was really looking forward to it. And then I, and then I, I picked up a, a, a bug, I think, from somewhere, and I played the first few games. And I, I, re, I remember as in the dressing room, coming in after, it was my first goal, Birmingham, and um, I think we won 5-0, so everyone was more than happy. And I got my me, got me first goal, and, um, but I flopped into the chair. And, uh, and I remember Jim, Jim saying to me, oh, he went, what's up with you? I said, oh, I'm absolutely shattered. And he said, ah, that's because you're getting old. He was, make, you know, he was just making a bit of a joke about it. I, <laughs> I was 29 and touching 30, I suppose. And, uh, but I knew I didn't feel right. And then um, I had about, I think about three, four weeks off ill and then came back and I still wasn't right when I came back. So it was a bit of a struggle. And then I remember playing away at Wolves it was and suddenly I went to jump and I went doing and sprung up and I, I had me sort of bounce and energy a little bit come back. And then obviously the, the things moved on and you know, I just got, you know, just got to sort of trying to form a partnership with Guy and it, and it worked. You know, there's great little re- relationships around the team. Warren Neal at what right back, Chambo on the right, great little triangles of clever football, all designed to try and, you know, Alan Mack, bless him, uh, try, you know, making runs from from midfield, and you know we, we, had, we had a great little setup, and uh, I was I was really enjoying it, and it was all designed really to get guy chances because you got got guy a chance, he scored, yeah. put it in front of him, he scored, and that's what it that's what it was really, um, and, and 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 the brand of football, I think fans were enjoying. Um, I don't know what the fans' expectation was. I'm not really sure what my expectation was. You always live in hope when you're a player that you're going to have a good season. It's going to go well. Um, you know, I remember times being about fifth and sixth, and can we get there? Will we stay there? All that type of thing. Um, but, but generally speaking, it was just an exciting, a really exciting season, '92. How did you view a move to Portsmouth, considering you played at clubs like Tottenham and Liverpool? Was it a move down for you? Yeah, I mean, look, I. I, I, I Without boring you to death, I'd have to. The, the truth of the matter was is that, that I, I hadn't done myself justice at Tottenham. Hence, I'm looking at going down a division, which I didn't want to do. Um, so when I got approached about coming here, my first reaction wasn't to instantly want to do it. Um, you know, and one of, and <clears throat> this is just me being honest. That one of the factors that um, made me come was. Um, in 1992, the interest rate, this is sound mad, was 15, 16%. And, um, you know, and every month my uh, and the property market was sliding backwards. And um, it's weird how I'm linking this to football, but I, I wasn't going to come. And then I said to the club, if you buy my house off me, I'll come. And they bought my house off me. And that's, the reason, that's another reason why I came. Um, so through the summer, I remember being on holiday, uh, the whole family went, we, we went away. And um, I just had my head down training. I thought, I don't want to go there. And they think, oh, I've come from there to there and I'm not going to do it properly. Um, I, I trained hard, you know, I trained hard. I wanted to come back, you know, ready mentally, physically to, to do it properly. Um, sometimes I struggled with things like the facilities weren't that good, the training facilities weren't that good, you know, but didn't really moan about it because then you sound like a big time Charlie who's come from, you know, up there, and so, but, but secretly I thought it, you know, our training ground weren't always the best. It wasn't a training ground where you wanted to go out and practice crossing and shooting and finishing and, you know, it's windy and bobbly and, um, you know, so the, the, that, was, that was the hardest bit for me to get my head around was facilities and, you know, just that little bit of quality. It's because it's important, I think, that stuff. Um, but anyway, you, you, you get on with, you just get on with it, don't you? And, um, you know, and, and, that, and as the season went on, we, we you know, it, it just gathered momentum. Um, you know, Guy had an absolute phenomenal season. You know, amazing feat what he did. And, um, you know, I, I enjoyed what, I enjoyed my role in the, in that situ- in, in the team, you know, so that, yeah. You can't mention Whittingham without mentioning Walsh and vice versa. Is telepathic the right word to use? No, no uh, not really. It just, it just worked. You know, Guy played on the shoulder of defenders. I like to drop deep and pick the ball up and wriggle and, you know, get turned. And I think Guy knew, and, and it wasn't only that, you, had, you know, you had, you had the dynamic of 
because I vacated that hole a little bit, Alan McLaughlin ran into it and gave, gave us another option because me and Macker, I think, finished about on the same goals that season, about 14 or 15. You had Chambo who could, you know, do great stuff down the right-hand side. Um, and, and so it just worked. You know, Guy, you, you, you know, if Guy had gone out of the team, we would have struggled because who would have, who would have replaced his goals? Um, you know, sometimes people would have looked at me and thought I should have scored more goals. You know, in a, per, in a perfect world, in a different setup, maybe I could have done, but it, I think it just lent itself to me trying to get chances for Guy, Chambo trying to get chances for Guy. When I came short, Alan McLaughlin made a run into the box and he scored. And, and, it, and it worked. Um, and, you know, it was just keeping Guy, you know, Guy, guy where he needed to be um, in the box scoring goals. So, so it worked, you know. Um, luckily, he never got injured, though. <laughs> you said you'd never did yourself justice at Tottenham. So do you feel you've reignited your career at Fratton Park? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think the proof that I got a move to Man City, um, I say I got a move, I mean, the club, the club <laughs> Portsmouth took the offer. Um, and, and yeah, and I thought at my age, I was 32, so to get the chance to go and play in the Premier League, one last. Because if you, if, you, if you think, when I, when I left Tottenham, I lost my football self-esteem a little bit and had to recover it, and I recovered it at Portsmouth, and I recovered it at Man City. So when, so when I came back here the second time, you know, I, I felt good about the way I'd played for the last three, two, three years. And, um, you know, and that, that's a nice feeling to have as a, as a player. Um, knowing you're doing yourself justice. I didn't do myself justice um, at Tottenham. Having gone all season like you did, how excruciating was it to lose out on automatic promotion as you did? I, I, yeah, I mean, it, of course it was dis massively disappointing. I, I, had a, I had a slightly different view to a lot of other people though, which was, um, I'm not sure the club would have backed, backed, the, you know, backed the manager with the money he would have needed to put a good side together. I don't know that as fact. That's how I felt from just our gym struggled to get a player to come in at that level. Yeah. They struggled, you know, had to wheel and deal and you know, nick one here, a loan from there, or, you know, at, at that level. So he, we did, a Jim Smith put an amazing team together for not a lot of money. Um, that nearly, you know, we were on the cut, I think we, we lost out by two goals over West Ham on automatic promotion. And, um, and that would have, uh, you know, so, so if you're asking me whether, would I have preferred another exciting season going for promotion in the Championship or getting battered every week in the Premier League because we never had a good enough team like Norwich, do get like, in today's football a little bit, you know, even though they're a good side, you know, they, struggle to, they struggle to win a game. Um, would I have enjoyed that? No chance. No, I'd had my, I've already had 12, 13 season in the top flight and you know, I, I, I'd, have, I'd have liked to have enjoyed my, my whatever years I had left playing in an exciting team that had a chance at that level. You know, if we'd have gone up, I don't know if we'd have had a chance. Don't know that as fact. The loss at Sunderland was crucial. The loss of Paul Walsh for the playoffs was equally crucial. Yeah, I, I didn't even realise that, that was, any of that was in play when it happened. Um, you know, um, you're not thinking about that. I was, I was revved up that day. Um, you know, and I was getting a bit of a special, a special attention off of someone. And, uh, so he got a bit of a, a, whack in the, a whack in the face with my elbow. The referee saw it and that was, that was me gone. Um, and um, yeah, and I remember got in a bit of trouble as well because I, I remember walking, just going down the tunnel and there's a bag, a bag there. And I, so I went to boot it and um, it was full of, full of studs. It was heavy, really heavy. And I remember hurting my foot. And then I got in the dressing room and smashed all the mirrors up. And then the coppers came in and told me to behave myself. My head had gone a bit. And um, you know, I was raging at the time. And um, yeah, so I, I ended up you know, missing out. Um, missing out, being able to help play whatever part I could have done in those two games. Um, it just wasn't meant to be, I suppose. A mistake. And then Guy Butters also got sent off. Yeah, yeah. Um, so suddenly we're playing with nine men, you know, which, and, and so Jim, I remember Jim always looked at it that, you know, them two goals, you know, if you've got even Guy on the pitch, maybe you only lose one more goal, yeah. which meant we, I don't know where we, where we had better goals for than um, West Ham, I don't know, um, but we might have gone up, just might have gone up just on that, that's how Jim used to look at things. Um, but anyway, it wasn't meant to be, was it? Did you know that you were instantly out of the playoffs once, once that? I can't, I can't really be sure. I, can't, you know, I couldn't say for sure. 
I couldn't say for sure unless it dawned on me after, when, when my head cooled down a bit and someone had pro probably reminded me of it. Um, but, but yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't aware that that was a consequence of it when it happened right at that point. I don't know why I wasn't aware. Um, but yeah, don't, that's how I remember it anyway. But yeah, dis disappointing. Um, and then losing to Leicester in that first, you know, first part of it was, was massively deflating from memory. Um, so then picking yourselves up and having to come, um, come, come back from that the next season's hard. But then, but then there was lots of talk of, I remember being in, I think it was Latte, me and Neil Sillett were talking about this the other day and Alan Knight, we had a coffee and um, talking about, we was over in, I think it was a place called Latte in, uh, I think it was, was it Norway? I think it, was, it might have been Norway, I can't remember. But, um, you know, and, and there was talk, talk of Guy leaving. And I, I, was a, I was a bit deflated about that because, you know, um, you know as, cause as I said at the beginning, uh, it worked what we did. The, the, the players we had, it worked. I don't blame Guy at all for wanting to go and getting, getting his opportunity in the top flight. I mean, any player would have done that. Um, and that's what he had to, had to do. I remember talking to him a few times and he th said to me, I think it's close to something happening and then bang, it did happen. And, uh, and then uh, that was it, so it was, it was disappointing. And, and then, yeah, then, then it got a bit strange really. I, Lee Chapman came in um, and you know, I found, you know, he, he was obviously done, done have so well, Lee, in his career, but I just didn't, that, we didn't have that same link, that same understanding. And um, anyway, not that long after, I come in, he's gone to West Ham. So I think Jim realised it weren't working and, and, and got his money back for Lee and then he brought Jerry Creaney in. Um, and uh, Jerry could have been a good player. He was a good player, but he could have been a, a very good player with a different, different attitude. But I understand, because I was like him a little bit at one point, um, in, in my career. So he was probably like I was when I was at Tottenham. Maybe not behaving himself the best, talented boy, but with a better attitude and a better application um, would, have been, would have been a much better player. Um, but then we played up, where was it? We played up at Manchester United, didn't we? And um, you know, we had a really great night. We had a great week up there actually, because it was like, you know, we played Man U, drew 2-2, two, two, and then Maka, bless him, scored a, scored a hat trick. And it was a really nice week for us. Um, we weren't really, uh, we weren't really doing anything in terms of the league position, in terms of getting promotion. Um, so all those little things were highlights in what was... I, I, I just hated plodding. You know, I hated plodding. I always felt like I wanted to be going somewhere for something. And, you know, so I really didn't enjoy that. Um, but after the... Um, I did get a phone call from Brian Alton um, after that, not so long after that game, saying, would I come to Man City? Um, and I said, yeah. I said I would because you know I wanted to still you know football's a short life a short career and um, you know I was going to get a last chance to, to have a little you know hurrah at that level um, so yeah it, it seemed to take an eternity to happen but eventually Jim came to me and said we've agreed a fee with Man City do you want to you know you're going that was it you know you neglect to mention at Old Trafford in that two-all draw you scored both the goals yeah, yeah, no, it was a lovely, it was a lovely night, night for me that night, um, you know, two, two headers. You know, I think people, I, I often get asked about heading because it's quite um, something that a lot of people are talking about today with the effects, the after effects and all of that. Uh, and I've just taken part in a dementia study, so, because um, there seems to be a lot of it around, so it needs looking at. But, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed heading the ball, believe it or not. I'm only small, but I, you know, I, I grew up heading the ball. Uh, I like, you know, I grew up jumping and heading the ball, so I, you know, I like, I like, like to do that. So, um, not that the second goal was just a, it took a deflection, it fell in my path, and I headed it in. The first one was a better header. But to say you've yeah, not to couple past Peter Schmeichel, Man United at, 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 you know, Old Trafford is always nice. I'd scored there for Liverpool before, which is it's always a great feeling. Scoring any goal is a great feeling, but sometimes it's extra special depending depending on where it is. And in the Stratford end as well, one of them. One yeah, well, one at each end it was, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we got robbed of a penalty. I mean, Paul Parker on Alan McLaughlin. Um, it was a stonewall penalty, yeah. But again, and then we lost 1-0. I think Paul Ince in a replay uh, back here. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't a B, but they were excite still exciting times. It brightened up that season, those yeah. games, um, having that little run in the cup. And, uh, yeah, sort of kept it going a bit. Why do you think it wasn't happening in the league, given 
you could create that level of performance. Guy didn't have Guy's goals. You know, if we'd have kept Guy, I think we could have done. We could have, you know, gone at it again. Um, and um, you know, I, I think probably if your Guy he gets fed up of the role that people think I played in his goals, you know, and I, I and I and I, you know, I, I getting Player of the Year that year, I felt a bit embarrassed mm. by it. Uh, you know, part of me was, was thank you to the fans, thank you for appreciating how I play, what I do and how I do it. Um, but for him not to win that was, was, was ridiculous. He should have won it. You know, to score that many goals and the way he did, it's just he should have won Player of the Year. And if I could give him mine, I would. He can have it if he wants to come round and get it and, and we'll engrave his name on it. But, no, you know, but you know, don't get me wrong, it's always nice to, to get recognised. I, I, think, I think that would have been massively disappointing for him, if he's honest. And people keep do tend to bang on about my role in his goals. He scored. I saw one on Twitter the other day where I can't remember who it was against. Where he's gone through about four players on the halfway line and gone through and scored. It's a great goal. Yeah, you know, he scored some great goals. You know. I mean, there was a goal against Bristol Rovers. You, you, you must remember it. Yeah, yeah, where yeah, you, where yeah. you both waltzed down the whole side of the pitch and exchanged balls two or three times. Yeah. I mean, it, it was wonderful to watch. Yeah, yeah but he, he had to interact with me to do it. It wasn't like, you know, he scored it. I, you know, but, we, but it was just two players interacting cleverly to create a chance. And if you created him a chance, he scored it. So it's down the left-hand side here and we went... Yeah, he played it to me, I knocked it back to me. He set me back and he made a run and I slid it up the side for him. Uh, and, you know, and he knocked it in, it was, it was a great goal. I'm not even sure if that other goal he scored was in that game, I can't remember. Anyway, he scored, he scored some very good goals and he was always in the right place. He had a goal scorer's instinct and um, it was phenomenal what he did. And, um, you know, so, yeah, he, he, you know, and, and I don't know when, when he went, but went to Villa I don't know why it didn't work out for Guy, but I, I don't know. I don't, I, I'm not, I've never really had that conversation with him. But, um, but yeah, anyway, so, so for the second season for me, that was the factor. Guy, Guy, our relationship and his goals. Simple as that, really. You know, if we'd have replicated what we did. I mean, when you think of the two teams that got promoted, Newcastle and West Ham, they're big clubs. Mm. They're big clubs. Um, and we batted all the way with all of them. I think we beat Newcastle here, didn't we? Yeah, we did. At Fratton yeah. Park. Two I think it's good kit scores, I think. Kit yeah. Simon scored. And uh, yeah, so we had, we had some great nights, didn't we? And I tell you what, that game against Newcastle, when we, it was, I think it was when we were both, it was the later end of the season and it, there was a lot on it and it was a big, big game and it was absolutely rammed here. And when it was rammed here, the, the, the atmosphere was, yeah. was, it was incredible. You know, that's what made me want to play football, running out the tunnel and hearing that. You know, that, that really got, that motivated me, stuff like that. You know, it's a bit harder sometimes when there's like, like terrace, like gaps on the terraces and, you know. And also forgot about a game where we went to Oxford and was 4-0 up or something. Or, yeah, what was it? Drew oh my God, I, 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 I forgot all about that. To be like, I think Jim took me off. <laughs> Not that I was doing anything, you know, doing anything well or anything, but um, I think he thought the game was wrapped up, took us off and, oh my God. How did we not, you know, when you think them points that we lost there, mm. I mean, you look back on it and you think, well, it just wasn't meant to be, was it? But How did Jim react to that, do you remember? Uh, Jim, Jim could, you know, Jim could, you know, throw a, throw a hissy fit when he wanted. Um, you know, um, yeah, he, he, yeah, he, his head would have been exploding on that one, um, you know, and, um, yeah. The only problem was he tried to eat, drink a cup of tea, eat a sandwich and and do a team talk all at the same time. <laughs> Bless him. Um, but yeah, but so he, he was just a great, great manager, great guy, great character, um, just a great guy. So there's this theory that is never go back. Do you regret coming back to Pompey the second time? Not at all. No, no, not at all. I regret how I finished. I think that could have been, of avoid, could have been avoided. Um, you know, I, I was 33 nearly, um, and you know, I, uh, I mean, Terry Fennick pho phoned me up. I was at Man City doing pre-season, he t phoned me up and he said, he asked me about Fitzroy Simpson and Cole Griffiths. I said, Fitz will do you a good job. I said, Griff might drive you a bit mad because he's lazy, but he scores a goal, but he's lazy. He said, can you, depends where you can cope with a player's laziness. Um, and, I f and while he was on the phone, I said, don't you want me back? <laughs> And Fenn was my roomie at Tottenham. He was my room partner at Tottenham. So, uh, we, we, yeah, we got on well. 
And so I said, leave it with him. So that's what I did. And before I knew it, um, Jerry was going that way. I was coming this way. And, um, and yeah, and I was looking forward to it. And yeah, again, I, I, had not, I had exactly the same attitude to try and win, to run around, um, to do as much as I could. And, um, and, and I, you know, I was enjoying it. And, um, you know, but I'd, I remember at um, Mill Wall, I'd, I miscontrolled the ball and I lunged with my left foot to try and retrieve it and crunch my knee. And I, so I had a microfracture just on the top of my fibula there. And the surgeon said, give it three weeks and you'll be fine. The problem was, Fenn said to Neil Sillett, after about 10 or 12 days, can you, get him, can you see if he'll play? So not wanting to appear like a softy, you, you agree. I remember we went over the park over there, just over the back there. And I'm running along and I'm limping and I'm like, it's not the best seal, you know, it's a bit uncomfortable. And kept going and kept going, it got a bit easier and a bit easier. Uh, and I said, I'll give it a go. 20 minutes into the game, running across the pitch and pff, knee, knee collapsed. And that was hard, you know, that was a hard time, you know, coming to terms with, you know, the fact that your, your, your career's over. Um, you're never going to play again. Did you know instantly? I pretty much knew I'd done my cruise ship. I knew I'd snap something, I heard it pop. Um, I knew I'd snap something, I just wasn't sure what it was. But I, I knew when Seal done his, bent my leg up and stuck, because I know what he's looking for. You know, and I had that laxity in my knee, that little bit of laxity. I knew that I'd probably done my cruise shirt, and then it was just getting it confirmed. And then it weren't just that, because I felt when it popped, I heard my bone shear, you know, so I sheared a bit of bone off, and I had a messy knee now, not just, a, not just um, you know, the cruise shirt. And, and at my age, that was always, you know, I, 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 did, I did go for a second opinion to see if it was doable to come back. But by the time I'm 33, spent a year out, for, and then you've got to get fit, oh, it's just probably not going to work, is it? Um, and, um, you know, it was I was devastated. You know, devastated. It had just gone bang like that and it was over. Um, you know, being an being a integral part of the dressing room to never going back in the dressing room. You know, that's hard. That was hard for me anyway. Um, so, yeah, I hated that. Hated it. And I was, I was spewing. Yeah. Is there any replica, replication for playing? No. No. Just ain't. You know, and, and so, you know, trying to... You know, those highs you have in football, they're intermittent, but they're highs. They're massive highs, adrenaline highs. You know, I used to thrive for them, you know, um, you know and, and that, that's, what, you know, that's what kept me wanting to get out of bed and train every day. Um, you know, and um, yeah, that, that was gone. So the, ne the next part of your life's now kicking in. What's that going to be? Fear, uncertainty, not, you know, all of those things. I, 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 I struggled with that. You know, I struggled with that, if I'm honest. Um, but being the type of character I am, I put, put a face on and, and, and started running around doing all sorts, trying to, trying to do whatever I thought I was doing. I wasn't even sure. I didn't take 10 minutes to sit back. It got messy with the club over other stuff, you know, because Terry Venables turned up. I had history with Terry at Tottenham. Um, my settlement became complicated and it, it, yeah, it got messy. It got messy. And um, that was not a nice, not, was not a nice part of... Uh, my time here, because I was still under contract, but fighting and arguing and falling out of a lot of people over, over, you know, over money, basically. Yeah. yeah. Came back for a testimonial, though? Well, the testimonial was always part of my, my agreement when I signed. So the testimonial was nothing, um, nothing that I wasn't due anyway. No. Well, it, was, it was a benefit game, not a testimonial. So, because I took a pay cut when I come here, so the benefit game made up the pay cut. Um, which was always, but wasn't designed to happen in the way it happened. Um, but anyway, it, 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 again, it was very messy, very messy. And I don't really want to go into the, the messiness of it, um, but it turned out okay. It turned out okay because the club won at Bradford on the, on the, on the Sunday, I think it was, yeah. and, and the game was on a bank holiday Monday. But what the club did do, which was very naughty, was um, they had to guarantee my amount. And they, they, they said they would call the game off if I didn't sign an agreement not to guarantee it. Because if they hadn't have won at Bradford, it could have been a different scenario. It might have been, five, might have been 8,000 here, not 15, 13, 15,000, whatever it was. Um, and so I've, I, you know, I, I, I was bitter over that. 
I was a bit bitter over that. But um, anyway, it turned out all right because they did stay up, which was great for the club. It was great for Bawley. It was great um, for the fans, everybody connected. And, and it got me where I needed to be. Um, but it wasn't that, it's, it, you know, it was like when Terry came in and he didn't want to, he didn't want to settle me up. Um, and, uh, you know, again, it, it, there was a lot of like even fighting and animosity and stuff going around. And, um, and then Terry left. I'd agreed, a, I'd agreed a settlement and two, I think about two months into that settlement, which was over three years, um, the club went into administration and it was more uncertainty. Um, and then Milan Mandrich come along, bought the club and there was this weird footballers creditors rule that meant my, my uh, debt got reinstated and, and got sorted out in the end. But it was a lot of uncertainty, you know, readjustment, uncertainty. Uh, I was angry as well and I could be a, an explosive little so and so, um, and um, yeah, it wasn't a nice time because I was venting on a lot of people. <laughs> Not always in a very nice way. So I'm sorry to anyone I upset. <laughs> but, but listen, to end on a good note, the crowd that did turn up, Bradford City or no Bradford City, it showed people had taken you yeah. to their hearts. No, well, I, I, I sort of, I sort of knew that from the first game, and 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 I, and I had a I had a nice feeling that, you know, there'd be a good number of people there, and there was. And, and it's, it was always nice to be appreciated and then show that by, by coming to that game. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that was nice. You gave him a lot to remember, Paul, so thanks for the memories, mate.